in today's episode of the design breakdown we're going to break up this particular flyer into pieces and this is coming up hey everybody it's innocent here and welcome to the channel if you're new here please hit on the subscribe button if you are old here thank you so much for showing up so this submission is from oga really on instagram i'll link his instagram account in the description if you want to follow him he's an awesome designer so you might want to check him out so he sent these resources and that is what we're going to use for this particular design so if you are ready let's take a look at what we about designing all right so this is the flyer that we're going to look at so let's take a look at it so this flyer is very nice i particularly love the color combination the gradient aspect of it and the minimalism it's very simple and very straight to the point it communicates very well so let's quickly look at what we're going to do with this one so taking a look at this flyer it has been categorized into four major sections and the first one would have to be with the background so the background is basically the gradient aspect of it so you're going to need a gradient you're going to need the image that is kind of faded into the background and that is going to comprise of the background from what i see from here now the second aspect would have to be the main aspect here the main dish that is the ethan webo is it an ethan webo okay so this one and this small element that has been added looks good and the shadow over here so that is going to be the second part and the third one would have to be the test so the test the test here and the shape and the last one will be this element so we're going to group this particular breakdown into four major sections and i'm going to put a timestamp in the description if you want to skip to any part of this all right so this is just a four by four so we just go ahead and create a new document four by four and then we're going to hit on create so looking at what we just have over there we're going to make reference to this one and like i said i do not intend to take ownership of this design it is somebody's design that i'm only breaking down with the person's consent so the first thing would have to be the background so we're going to need a gradient and to do that you go to the layer adjustments over here you left click and then you're going to choose a gradient now if this is the first time you are using your gradient most of the times you find this place to be something like this or pure black and white so you're going to click on the gradient bar and then you're going to pick gradients i'm using photoshop 2021 but if it is anything less than 2021 you're just going to find your gradients over here so what you're going to do is you're going to pick any one of them if you want to make your different colors but i've already set the gradient so let's go ahead and choose that one so this is going to be the hex code the first one and this is going to be the second one now what we do from here is we go ahead and you click okay of course if you want to change the color you just have to click on the color here and you can just change it to any color that you want quite very simple now you just go ahead to click okay after you're done with everything and when you come to the style you're going to left click on it change this one to radial and that will be pretty much it you can drag it to this side this side or this side if you want to do it that way but this is centered and then we are going to click ok now it is time to add the faded image that is one of the stews so when you go to the resources so we've got a couple of dishes over here or i should say a couple of stews and we're going to make use of just one so we're going to test with this one first let's drag and drop it inside of photoshop and then you can place it over here now it fills the entire layer and then what we are going to do is we want to make it fade into the background of course the first thing that comes to mind is you can reduce the opacity but you see it doesn't really look that very fine so what we're going to do is we're going to play around with the blend mode so you just select the blend mode and then you can play around with all of these ones so i think this looks good overlay is very bright and soft light looks good you can right click and then rasterize the layer and then you're going to press ctrl shift and then u to desaturate it such that it is going to blend well into the background and if it feels like it is too much you can reduce the opacity then from here but let's try to 
transform this one out a little bit and let's place it somewhere around here excellent now you see there are a couple of things around the edges or the edges looks very hard so what we're going to do is we're going to add a layer mask to it and then we're going to choose the brush tool make sure your foreground color is black and then you can brush the edges off so that it blends seamlessly with the background so something like this and if you feel like it is too much you can just transform it out and that will be it for the background so you can just group these two and call it the background now we can go ahead and add the main subject and that is going to be the ethene wearable with steel all right so let's go into the resource here and we have this ethene wearable downloaded we're going to drag it inside of photoshop and then we'll bring it to this particular side now you realize from here that it already it's in the form of a png but then it still has the background so you'd have to remove it and i made a full video on that if you want to see it so we're going to pick anything like the magic one tool and then we're going to make a left click so it selects all around it we're going to hit delete and now it becomes a png after that we can drag and drop it inside of our main design so this one right over here and then you can open it up so you transform it up a little bit the image here is very small i mean the resolution is very small so maybe if you are trying to do a design this time or got really you might want to try to get something that is a bit higher resolution so you press ctrl a and then you make sure that it is in the middle and then you can drag it over here a little bit so somewhere around here so it is in the middle now let's try to open it up some more okay all right so once this is in we don't want it to hang around so we want to bring in something underneath of it so a shadow so to create the shadow you are going underneath of the layer that you just brought in and then you can use the ellipse tool or the circle tool if you want to call it that way you pick the circle and then you create a very small circle over here it depends on how big you want the shadow to be but of course you can just transform it so we create a circle and then we're going to change the color to black now you go ahead and click ok and then you can take time to reposition it like this so something like that now right click on the ellipse and then rasterize the layer go to filter blur and then gaussian blur and then you can play around with how high you want your radius to be like so something like this and then you can just play around with it now after you've gotten what you want you just go ahead and you click ok and even after this you can still press ctrl t to transform this out so something like this will do and if this feels like it is too much for you you can just go ahead and decrease the opacity if it feels like it is too less also you can just make a duplicate and then it will just double it up and that is it for this one the next one that we're going to add will be that small shape on top because it is part of the main item so we're going to pick the ellipse tool again so let's pick the ellipse tool here and we're going to create a perfect circle like this let's try and make sure that we have it somewhere around here so somewhere like that so you take your time to position it now the first thing you want to do is you want to drag the fill to zero so you just reduce the fill to zero percent you right click on it and then you go to blending options and from there you can add something like the stroke so let's add a stroke to it and this is too much for us so let's reduce the stroke over here so you first of all left click on the stroke like this and then you can reduce it to the part or the size that you want so something like this is okay and then you can go ahead and click okay now from here you can just press ctrl t again and then try to open it up a little bit so that it wouldn't look more of a perfect circle and let's make sure that it is centered right over there so what we're going to do from here is going to right click on the layer and then we're going to rasterize the layer style so if you choose rasterize the layer style or the effects that you added to it will still be there so you're going to choose rasterize layer style now once that is done it means that you can just pick anything like the rectangular marquee tool and then you can just make a selection of where you want this to reach so somewhere around here and then we can just delete it very simple right and from there we can just position it or reposition it to exact place that we want 
and then we can right click go to the blending options and then we can add an auto glow to it so auto glow you pick the color that you want and then you can add so i'm just going to pick something like white okay white and then i'm going to reduce the size like that so that it just glow i mean it just glow and then you're going to click okay once you get the effect that you want and this is going to comprise of the main so let let me just group all of this one Control G and let me call this one main. So if you make reference to this, we are just going to the next one will be the test on top of it. Okay, so for the font that was used in this one, it is called Watograph. I'll leave a link in the description if you want to download it. So we're going to pick our test tool, pick your test tool, and then you're going to left click on any part of your document, and then you're going to type Steel Palace. So you you realize from here that I've already tested out the font to make sure that it is the same thing, right? So I'm going to type still over here, right like that. And then I'm going to press Ctrl T to make sure that it is opened up a little bit. Let me just double click on it. Go to the toggle character over here and let me open it up a little bit to about 30 so that we can have enough space for the stroke. And once we're done with it, we're going to pick the test tool again and we can just type the palace underneath of it as well. So steel palace, so something like this. And that looks great. So let's select all of these and we're going to give it the color white and click OK. Now we press Ctrl A and make sure that it is centered and then we can drag it to the top over here. For the effect, only one effect was added to this and that is the stroke. So you right click on this, go to the blending options and then we are going to pick the stroke. So right from here, we're going to pick the stroke and for the stroke, you're going to give it a color so I can pick a color from here. So you realize that the color has to be something that blends with the background as you can see from the main reference. So you pick something like this or you can go a bit darker so you basically have to pick something that blends with the background or the background that was used and then you can go ahead and click ok and we can increase the size a little bit so something like this so you realize from here that if you try to go somewhere darker okay so somewhere darker like this i think this looks good and let's try to bring this one down a little bit so let's choose 10 and then we can go ahead and click ok now that is it for the top part and I'm going to add the shape, this particular one during the elements. All right. So the next test is going to be the one over here. And actually this has been open already and this is an actual flyer. So if you're around Kumasi and its environs and then you need some, someone to prepare steel for you, you can give a call to the contact on this one. Okay. So let's try to recreate the one underneath here. So we go into our main document or the one that we are working on and the first thing we want to do if you want to recreate something like that is you pick the rounded rectangle now for the rounded rectangle it depends on the edges the radius over here if you set it to somewhere around let's see let's try it 20 percent or 20 pixels you realize that if i draw the rounded rectangle it wouldn't give me that curvy edges all right so if i want to get something like that i would have to make the radius a bit higher so let's go 100 and see so something like that it looks good okay so we first of all pick something like this and we create around 100 radius and right there now we're going to double click on the layer thumbnail over here and we're going to give it a color black we click ok and then we can make sure that we press ctrl a to center it and then you can bring it to the very bottom over here and we're going to write the test on top of that but unfortunately for this test i tried as much as possible i even tried to use the what font on my fonts.com i couldn't still find it the only one that i found was this particular font that is quite very similar but it is also very expensive 35 dollars for one font okay Thank you. We are going to use another font. All right. So I couldn't get the exact font for this one, but I believe Ogawili will be in the description. So he's definitely going to help us with this particular font. Ogawili, thank you for helping us. 
okay so we're going to pick any font for this one and of course since we didn't get this one i'm just going to type opening soon here but i'm going to use my favorite or let me go for lato okay so we're going to use lato for this particular one and then it is medium let's use the medium and then we can bring it right on top of this one you press ctrl t and then you can transform it out a little bit and then you can reposition it over here now you realize that for the color he chose something also from the same background to something quite orange he went to this part somewhere this part very cool and then you can click ok and then you are done with this one and the next one would have to be the test underneath of it so the door to door delivery and then the call you see over here he used a bit of uh, he closed up the test a little bit if you want to do that it is just fine you just have to select all your tests go to the toggle character and then you can decrease or you can change your tracking so you can select this one and give it about minus 50 and then you see that your test will get very closed okay so the more you go the higher you go the closer it becomes okay so basically he made this place like an italics he just italized the test over here but for our design we are not going to italize it so let's just make a duplicate of this one bring it underneath here we're going to select all the test and we're going to change the color to black now we click ok and then i have the test already written over here so with that said we can just group all of these ones including the steel here and then we can call this one the test okay so let me just select this one and call this one test now we're going to drag this top on top here so that we can have some space underneath of this one and then we're going to change this one to six and that looks perfect so that is it for this one as well now we can bring the steel palace over here bring it down a little bit we can bring our main down a little bit as well and then we can go ahead and add the elements so the first element that we are going to add will be this particular one on top here so this particular one let's pray that we get it exactly right so you can apply the same thing you can use the same rounded rectangle to create this because first things first you realize that it has some sharp curve over here a rounded curve so you can create a rounded rectangle like this make sure your curve or the other side is very curvy and then let's change the color to white okay so white and let's send it on top of all the other layers now we are going to use the warp to make this one i don't know if i can't guarantee if you're going to get the same exact thing so we're going to so we're going to press ctrl t to activate the transformation controls right click and then select warp over here now you take your time let me just zoom in here you take your time and then you can just play around with this one so the first thing we want to do is we want to make sure that this side is a little bit heavy okay so ctrl t right click warp and then we can play around with this side so let's go let's try it is not really working for me okay so okay so let me just first scale it up a little bit so that i'll get enough space right click and then warp over here and then i can bring this side like that and bring this side as well whoa that is too much so you can just take your time to basically do something like this and then you can close the edges here as well bring this one down a little bit so you can just take your time to do this and then along the way you can right click and choose the scale over here to scale it up to this side something like that and then you can just rotate it so you can rotate it like this right click scale and then you can scale it up a little bit and somewhere around this side too i think we got closer but not that perfect as the one in there so you can just take your time to do this but we got very very close aside this side or taking off the side we got very close now once you're done with this you can just go ahead to this particular test that is the steel here 
and then you're going to right click on it copy the layer style and then you go to the rounded rectangle and then you're going to paste the layer style that is basically it is going to copy the same effects that you added to the steel palace to that on the rounded rectangle and once that is done i think we are good but then we can select that alongside the steel palace or the steel yeah the steel palace test and then we can open it up a little bit to make sure that it looks very bold so something like this and for the last element that is the one that you see around here it makes the whole work very nice and to do that you're just going to decide to create it yourself or you can just google up something like this so you're going to decide to just create it yourself so we're going to pick the rounded rectangle here or you can even use the rectangle so let's go for the ellipse instead and then we're going to create a very small ellipse a very small ellipse like this and then the color we have to make sure that it is white so you double click on it and then you make sure that the color is white now you are just going to make duplicate of this so you make one duplicate drag it underneath select the two by holding control make one more duplicate drag it like that and then you have four so in this one we have just four okay so what we're going to do is we're going to select all of these ones and we're going to press ctrl e to merge it so it becomes just one and then you can press ctrl j to duplicate it bring it over here and then make one more duplicate like that so if you select all of these again press ctrl e this time around this also becomes one and then you can take your time and reposition it somewhere around here so you can press ctrl t to transform it if it feels like it is very small or when you are creating it you can just decide how you want the spacing to be done and then i would like to just push it in a little bit like that and i'm going to make one more duplicate to this particular side and then i'll place it right over here all right so after that we're going to select all of this and group it and we can call this the element so you realize that we have our background we have our main and then we have our test and lastly the elements and we've totally broken down this whole design just like that all right so basically that's it that's how you design something like this if you this can be used in restaurant designs it can be used in food designs and so many things or hotels whatsoever menu design you can just incorporate ideas or you can just borrow ideas from this one a big shout out to Oga really follow him on instagram i'll leave links to his instagram account in the description follow him he's a great designer if you want to pick up ideas one or two inspirations you can follow him up you can also send your design or a design that you've seen somewhere for breakdown through the email that i'm displaying on the screen right now thank you so much for sticking around to watch this video let me know in the comment section how this came out are we able to actually break down and let me know if i left anything out that you need further remember that oga really will be in the comment section as well if you have any further questions you put it in he might be there to answer you thank you so much for sticking around to watch this video please don't forget to like and subscribe and i'll see you guys in the next video it's innocent here and 